Okay, let's solve a triangle. So in this triangle, we can call this the side, side, angle version of a triangle because we're given two sides in a row and then an angle. Don't um, go in a different order. All right, so when we're given this situation, there's a good chance that we end up with two different triangles. And I'll show you how we make that decision. So we don't know that it's a right triangle. I'm gonna go ahead and label our sides. So six is gonna be labeled as A because it's across from alpha. Eight in this case is gonna be labeled as B because it's across from beta. And then this other side length, we're gonna label as C initially because it's across from gamma. Um, and that relationship basically always holds. All right, so as we set this up, we're gonna use the law of sines as listed out here on the right-hand side. So as we take a look at this, we know an opposite pair. We know side A and we know angle alpha. So these, the angle on the side that are opposite of one another, that's key to being able to use the law of sines. All right, next, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna set up the law of sines based on the information we know, we know side B. So I'm gonna first try to work on finding angle beta. So in setting this up, I'm gonna go with sine of 35 degrees over side A, which is gonna be six, equals sine of beta over eight. Now in solving this down, it doesn't look too bad, but we need to get rid of the eight. By getting rid of it, we're going to multiply both sides by eight and move it to the other side. So now we have maybe with a little bit of reducing down, you can say four sine of 35 degrees over three. Eight over six is equivalent to four over three. And then we still have sine of beta going on on the right-hand side. Now our angle beta is inside of the sine function. So we need to counteract that and get rid of the sine function. What I'm gonna do is apply a sine inverse function to both sides. So as we apply that sine inverse to both sides, these are gonna do the opposite of one another and we're gonna get returned just beta. On the left-hand side, I'll put this in my calculator. Remember, you wanna be in degree mode because it's 35 degrees given to us here. And what I got returned in my calculator was 49.9 degrees. So you may be saying to yourself, okay, that's straightforward enough. We put 49.9 in here for beta and go on with the problem. Let's work on finding gamma and C. And that's correct, except for this is the side side angle version of a triangle. So there is an op a chance that we have a second triangle that could be created out of this same starting information. All right, this is one of those cases where we get two triangles that could be created. Um, and how I know that is when we use sine inverse, that's when you always have to double check to see if we have a second triangle. So I'm gonna write that on here at the top. When you use sine inverse, check to see about second triangle. All right, when this angle that gets returned, when you use sine inverse on both sides, if that's bigger than the uh, alpha that was already given to us, there's a really good chance, you know, we're gonna get the second triangle coming out. So with that second triangle, let's see, how do we calculate beta for the second triangle? Well, what you do is we basically visualize this angle that we just got returned for beta. What would happen if that was in the second quadrant? Okay, what was on the inside here when we just had sine of beta equals um, what's in blue here? Um, that fraction before we applied the sine inverse, this is positive, okay? If I put this all in my calculator, I would return something positive. And we know that um, from the phrase, all students take calculus, sine is positive both in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant. So this is the angle that just got returned in the first quadrant, 49.9 degrees is in the first quadrant but there's a second angle that would land in the second quadrant that wraps around into the second quadrant. It would also, when you plug it into sine, produce this exact same positive ratio from the left-hand side. So how we find that is we, we take our 49.9 degrees. We use that as a reference angle into the second quadrant. So draw it 
um, from this angle we're trying to find down to the x-axis in the second quadrant. And we're going to do that calculation as 180 degrees, all right, because that's halfway around. But then we want to take away 49.9 degrees. So our second possibility for beta is 130.1 degrees, which still works with the one angle that we're be we've been given, right? If we took the 135 plus, um, sorry, the 35 degrees plus the 130.1, we're not bigger than 180 degrees. So what that is telling us is we have a first triangle and a second triangle. And I'm going to use subscripts to indicate which one is which. So I'm going to draw one triangle for beta one, where we have 49.9 degrees, and a second triangle for beta two, where it's 130.1 degrees. All right, so on our first triangle, I'm going to use beta one on the triangle that's already given, even though it may not be drawn to scale by any means. This is going to be 49.9 degrees in this corner. What remains is we still need gamma and we still need side C. I'm also in this triangle gonna go ahead and put subscripts for sub one saying these all are on the same triangle. All right, the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and locate is gamma one. All right, we now know two of these three angles for this triangle. We can get the third angle by saying all of them always have to add up to 180. So if I start with 180 degrees and I subtract off the 35 degrees, and I subtract off the 49.9 degrees that we've already found on this triangle, what's gonna remain is gonna be our gamma one. So gamma one looks like it's gonna be 95.1 degrees. All right, now that we know um, all three of the angles, the only thing that's missing on this triangle is side C1. So to get side C1, um, I'm gonna go back to the law of sines. So I can say C1 over sine of gamma, which is 95.1 on this triangle degrees, is gonna equal, I could use either A or B. I'm going back to A because that was given to us. So I can say six side A over sine of 35 degrees. And now to solve down for C1, we just need to multiply by sine of 95.1 to isolate the C1 on one side all by itself. So again, multiply by sine of 95.1. Multiply on the right-hand side also by sine of 95.1 degrees. That'll isolate the C1 on one side by itself. We'll put all the right-hand side in our calculator, making sure we're in degree mode. I got this to be about 10.4 rounded to the nearest tenths place. All right, so go ahead and put it in our triangle here, 10.4. Now we've solved this triangle um, because we found all the side lengths and all the angles. However, remember we found we had a beta two, we had a second um, triangle that could be drawn here. So I'm gonna draw a second triangle over here on the right-hand side, and it's not gonna be drawn to scale by any means, but I know my alpha is 35. My A over on this other side is going to be six. B's got to be eight. Those were what were given to us from the beginning. And now we get into the sub twos. So we can say beta sub two is going to be 130.1 in this corner. We still need to find gamma sub two, and we still need to see C sub two. All right. Next up, what I'm going to find is gamma sub two. Very similar to what we just did over on the left-hand side, but I can say gamma sub two, well, they always add up to 180. Let's subtract away the 35 we know. We know 130.1 also. And what's gonna be left here is just gonna be 14.9 degrees for that angle. All right, last thing we need to find to completely solve this triangle is find C2. So I'm gonna use the law of sines again, say C2 over sine of 14.9 is equal to, I'll go back to the A's, so we can say six over sine of 35 degrees. And then all that remains is to isolate the C2, so we're gonna multiply both sides by sine of 
That'll get C2 on one side all by itself. The right-hand side's all gonna go into our calculator. And we got out 2.7. And now we've solved everything. Um, let's also double check to make sure our answer makes sense. So how these always get set up is the biggest side or the biggest angle is always across from the largest side length. Medium angle across from the medium side length, smallest angle across from the smallest side length. It's true on the right-hand triangle. It's also true on the left-hand triangle. Biggest angle, biggest side length. Medium angle, medium side length, smallest angle, smallest side length. So these triangles are definitely not drawn to scale, but you get the idea of what's going on here. This two triangle case can be a big challenge. Just remember if you use sine inverse on both sides, whatever gets returned, if that's larger than the angle that's given to you, then you have to double check and see if there's a second triangle that's possible. Now drawn below here, you can kind of see the two different options drawn to scale. So you can see the oblique triangle, the one that has an angle larger than 90 degrees. This was the sub twos that we actually found the first time through would be this left-hand triangle. And the sub ones, they use prime in our book to do this um, is given over here on the right-hand triangle. So I hope this helps out as you're working through a pretty challenging case of side-side angle using the law of sides. Good luck.